Next thing we're going to move on to is um, fuel metering systems. Again, we've done our pilot. So we're going to actually move to the, the slide and the needle part and, and whatnot of the slide carburetor. But I'm just going to jump back to car carburetors for now. Is we're going to cover a system in carburetors where we have a fixed venturi. Now the problem with a fixed venturi is the changing of the effect, the venturi effect, as I told you, or different from a slide carburetor. So there's a bit of a problem because at lower engine speeds, you are going to have difficulty discharging here, and at higher engine speeds, it's going to work better. Now that's kind of contrary to what we want um, in trying to accelerate the engine from a low speed. All right. Now, accelerating the engine. To run an engine at a constant speed, we have to we have we have a fuel mixture. We have to have an air fuel ratio of stoichiometric ratio or lambda 14.7 to 1. But that doesn't accelerate the engine. To accelerate the engine, we need a richer mixture. About 12 to 13, 12 to 1. 12 parts air to one part fuel instead of our uh, 15 or 14.7 to 1 to keep the engine at the same speed. So on the carburetor we need a system to enrich it and on the fixed venturi carburetor that is normally referred to as a power valve system and there is a myriad of power valve systems but they all follow um, some basic principles which is that they allow a bypass of fuel to enrich it bypassing the normal jets and they do so only when there is a sensed drop of vacuum to accelerate the engine at all um, there's a drop in vacuum and the spring inside or the usually the spring inside the uh, power valve um, forces the power valve open and then the allows a bypass of fuel in a couple of uh, couple of ways I'll I'll mention and then when the engine reaches speed the vacuum resumes the power valve shuts and it reverts back to the fixed jetting if you want to know what that is that's another little venturi okay that's a boost venturi that's... anyway let's get under the point eh? power valves here's the power valve piston anyway pull the top off and you might see this uh, long uh, T-shaped uh, rod hanging down, a little T-shaped or a little button on the bottom sticking down from the top horn of the carb. And up the top inside, it's got a little piston. Okay, so it's got a metal to aluminium. It hasn't got any uh, seals there as such, but it, it only has to, has to um, you know, it doesn't bypass much. Uh, it's not a problem. Not a problem. It's got a spring there, and the spring is opposing the vacuum pressure. The vacuum vacuum intake manifold senses the vacuum it is the vacuum okay at, at idle speed high vacuum pulls our piston upwards against the spring okay if we give it the berries we lose our manifold vacuum the spring pushes the plunger down the engine gets to our full speed and vacuum at the intake is resumed once the throttle plate is Close back down, and we need to go back to our stoichiometric ratio. Our vacuum lifts the piston up again, lifts the rod up again. Now the rod pushes on a little device down in the bottom of the carburetor float bowl. So note that this rod will go down inside fluid, and so that this part of it here I'm pointing to is actually under the fluid, under the under the fuel, in the fuel. Okay, it might be close to the top or whatever, but the, the rest of the, the thing is down underneath the fuel. So that when the power valve operates, it loses vacuum, it pushes down this button against a spring and it opens this little orifice. Now you see here, this little orifice here, this one is right next to where the main jet is, all right, the primary main jet. So it has access to fuel to allow fuel to literally gurgle down here into the same passageway that would normally be controlled only by the main jet orifice size so obviously it enriches the mixture by supplying more fuel vacuum increases 
Vacuum pulls up here, lifts our power valve up, closes our bypass valve, and the main jet resumes metering at our stoichiometric ratio. So when this opens, we get our 12 to 1, and we go back to our 14.7 to 1. Theoretical. Now this one is a family favourite, okay? With any uh, with any petrol head. A good old Holly Carburetor power valve. Simple, but that's what Holly Carburetors are. It's all about simple, okay? Simple carburetors for simple folk. Easy to fix. Now this power valve, likewise, has a spring on it. And if you have a look down the well there, you can see a eensy bitsy hole there, okay? And then up here you will see another hole, okay? Now, on one side of this valve we have a vacuum so that um, normally is the case same as for this ported to intake vacuum so when intake vacuum signals the power valve shuts not allowing fuel to bypass when the when the vacuum uh, resumes when the, when the when the vacuum drops from the manifold which is which is ported to this so like i said before look at the locations these airports all around here okay every one of them note where they go to and from all right and you will find the ones that go to this little hole down here and then you will see what this button goes against on the other side but essentially that's the where the power valve is now in a holy carburetor that's nice and easily adjustable uh and the carburetor one and the Holy One comes with a little number on there that corresponds to the uh, millimeters hydrogen. I'm not sure which uh, scale it is, but it's the vacuum scale at which uh, this power valve um, will open below that vacuum and close above that vacuum. So you commonly need to uh, swap this if you happen to put a Holy Carburetor on an engine that is a little bit small for the Carburetor. Uh, but you're going to have a problem with your power valves because, um, yeah, they're not going to open at the right time. So what you're going to have to do uh, before you go fiddling around with your jets is you better suss out your power valves and make sure they're shut nice and tight at idle and that they only come in when you put your foot on the accelerator. Uh, and then once the power valves, well, the power valves have got to be shut, otherwise your mixtures are not going to be, just not going to be anywhere close to right. And then you can mess around with the rest of the mixtures. What is this? Well, any seasoned carburetor enthusiast will know what these are. This is a power valve piston for the vacuum. And these needles are kind of like this. They drop down into an orifice at the bottom of the float bowl, at the bottom of the fuel bowl, float bowl. So when the needles are withdrawn, progressively withdrawn because they're tapered on the ends, they will increasingly enrich and, or increasingly bypass fuel into the power circuit. Okay. Vacuum on here, once it's lost, as the vacuum progressively is lost, the, they come up and as vacuum is progressively resumed, they go down. So they have a nice progressive flow because they've got a long needle like that. Now the ones on the right are in fact needle jets, needle needle hangers, except these ones are actually on the secondaries because anyone who, uh, as I said, anyone's a cover enthusiast will know what these are. They are the power valve and the secondary hanger needles out of a Rochester quadrajet carburetor. This one on the right hand side is actually attached to the butterfly plate on top of the secondaries um, so that when the lower throttle plates open as the airspeed increases and the top plate opens the top plate raises these two needles out of the secondary metering jets so just ignore that for the moment but these ones here power valve with needle hangers in it four barrel carbies holly four barrel this kind in the metering blocks you know where these are behind the float bowls other carburetors piston type ones like this Piston parts usually in the top half of the carburetor. I might just mention things about uh, repair tips. If you're taking these, um, taking this stuff off, okay, you see that thing there? That's a gasket, okay. 
and that has to be replaced, obviously, okay? If it's all mm, gammy and you just stick another one in there, then you might end up with a leak here and you're just going to create problems. Uh, again, no compressed air forced into holes because if there's any cooties in there, they will just be irrecoverably deeper in the holes. And if you try and suck them out with your mouth, you might end up, uh, well, as I said, you know, the little dirty bits hit your tongue, especially around that. Anything anything that's going to like manifold vacuum or anything like that, that's got the yeah, dirty old cooties in there. Gaskets, don't put goop on the gaskets or anything like that. Clean them off all nice and clean. Make sure there's no little bits of gasket down those passages. And uh, yeah, nice new gaskets when you're putting them back on. So in general, that's why we pretty much don't put gasket cement on any of the gaskets in carburetors. Do not do that. Um, some of the stuff is a bit dissolved by uh, fuel, so even worse. Okay, let's see to, uh, was it on power valves here? Um, now I've introduced you to the tapered needle. Uh, we're going to jump back to our slide carburetors. I'm going to share it around, but uh, I'm not going to just focus on one carburetor and cover systems and then go to another one and cover the same stuff over and over again. So, uh, yeah, uh, fuel metering, okay, let's get down to the actual fuel metering, the jets. And um, this one is the uh, tapered needle, and uh, I will cover that in the next video. And we will discuss about how our jetting changes and adjustments of the various systems that we spoke about before interact with one another. And that uh, we will cover with... Uh, slide carburetors um, and the uh, needle jet and nozzle and the types we have there and a few uh, notes on adjustment so that'll do it for the day share the video thanks mechanic out